Good morning, realtors across the United States and wherever else you are. Um, I think I'm live and I'm trying to share my uh, share my screen here real quick so I can show you guys some slides. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And let me turn that off for just a second. Hey, uh, it's Ron Williams here. It's Wednesday, and I know it's 940. It's not 930, and uh, my apologies on that. Um, I'm still trying to get down all the tech uh, to make sure that I can pull this off at 930 every Wednesday. I'm getting closer, but some days I'm off, you know, by a few minutes. Uh, but hopefully you don't dock me too many points for that because I'm really trying to provide some value to you guys. And uh, if you're able to join with me here today, I would love, love for you to um, go to, there's a, see that streamer down at the bottom, go to streamyard.com, open up a new tab. Don't leave this one. But, you know, if you're in the, in the, uh, the new home niche blueprint group or the affiliate realtor group, and you're available to sit here with me today, I got some really, really powerful uh, training to share with you. It's not going to take very long, I don't think. I think we're going to kind of fly through it. Uh, but I want to talk to you about one of the most powerful concepts in advanced selling. And uh, I'll, I'll get back to it in one second here. But first of all, you know, go to streamyard.com slash Facebook and join the conversation uh, because I would love for you to give me your, your input. Uh, as I'm running through this stuff, I'm going to fly through some ideas that if you take these and apply them, it will make you money, okay? And that's what it's about, is closing more deals and making more money. But I would love for you to uh, be able to comment in the group uh, or the uh, the chat thing here and uh, tell me who you are. Now, you can you can chat even if you don't go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook, but at least this way I'll be able to see who you are and say, hey, and uh, not just, you won't come, you'll come up as more than Facebook user. Anyway. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. It's Wednesday. If, uh, if, if we're on the right day, it's if I'm on the right day, it's Wednesday. It's 930 in uh, central Illinois here and it's getting cold out. But I am so excited for many, many reasons. And I'm going to share a little bit of that with you today. Uh, my name is Ron Williams. I'm the founder of the New Home Niche Blueprint Group and also the founder of a little web platform called Hoodle which is a online community for new construction, for buyers uh, of a new construction home and builders and developers and realtors. And now we're adding in mortgage. And uh, so basically it's a place for buyers who want to build a new home. And guess what? There are millions of people that want to build a new home someplace across the United States. And one of the things that keeps them from doing it is they cannot find a realtor who really gets it, who really is going after and can be a fiduciary and a guide in building a new home. It's your opportunity. Um, hey, good morning. I see you. I see you there, Facebook user. Don't know who you are yet, but um, I'm glad you're here. And um, I'm going to share a few ideas with you guys today, uh, you know, on how to, how to advance your selling here through asking questions. It might seem like a weird thing. But um, and, and by the way, Facebook user, if you if you go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook and hit the little connect button, just hit a button. Then from here on out, every time, you know, we hop on one of these, uh, you'll be able to say hi and I'll be able to say hi to you specifically, which I'd much rather do. Um, so let me preface this real briefly and then we'll I'm going to jump into some tips and ideas for you. Um, I think I was probably, I don't know, six or eight years into uh, high ticket selling before there was a hoodle. Before I was a realtor, I was a headhunter. I was an executive recruiter and I got really, really good at it. But I was many years into being a recruiter and doing high ticket sales, high, very complex selling uh, before I understood uh, this key concept that I'm about to share with you. And that is that you can sell faster and better and easier by learning how to ask intelligent questions than you can by 
telling, 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 and trying to convince somebody of some play, something. You know, the best person to convince um, any buyer that you're working with or, or help them to convince is for them to convince themselves is to learn to ask the right questions. And I got to a place when I, when I, when this finally uh, clicked with me uh, years into being a recruiter and it was like, wow, this is amazing because, and I'll show you some reasons why, but it, it begins to entirely flip the script. When we think about selling, you know, we tend to think about, you know, you know, when you think about selling, a lot of times we think, well, I don't want to be salesy and I don't want to be pushy and I don't want to, you know, this or that. I don't want to offend anybody. But when you learn to ask questions uh, and you sell through asking questions, it completely changes the dynamics of it. And it, it got to a place where I really felt that, you know, I, what I was seeing was that the better my questions became, um, the more that I sold, the more that I closed and the easier that it closed where deals and, and transactions started to come together that, that, um, I couldn't have done previously just by asking questions. And so it's an interesting thing because I don't, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, you know, because once in a while I am <laughs> probably most of the time, but you know, I don't think it's something that we talk about a lot. The realtors talk about or, or are trained in a lot, but I came to a place where I believe that, that learning to ask the right questions is such a major, major component of your selling that you really, we could do a whole series of classes on it. So today, what I want to do is I want to dive pretty quickly into um, kind of a, a, a high level of what it means to start asking effective questions. And now, this is not the end all of how to ask questions. It's a starting point for the conversation. OK, we couldn't cover it all today. I mean, if, if we had a day to do it, we probably would cover it all. And, and, and most of all, just like everything we talk about, it's not just about what we say here, and it's not about the notes you take, even though I think you should, but it's about what you begin to implement. So what I want you to do today is to find one or two things that you can take away from this and go out and do it, okay? But I'm going to give you a bunch of tips really quick here, and we're going to start with, um, hang on a second, we're going to start with um, just kind of talking about the concept of asking questions and then, and then we'll we'll start to dive into what kind of questions and uh, I'm, I might even give you a few questions that you can kind of create a script around. But more than anything, I want you to begin to think about questioning as a strategy. OK, now I know that that might sound foundational, might sound kind of rudimentary. Which everybody knows you ask questions wrong, but um most often, I don't think we ask enough questions and we don't ask questions always in the right way. And when you when you get a hold of this, you'll find that you're going to be talking less and less and you're going to be listening more. And the buyers that you're working with, the customers, the prospects you're working with, they're going to lead themselves to this process much easier than you can for them. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here and let's hop into this. And uh, what I want to talk about is effective questioning strategies. And um, see if we can get into. So when you learn how to ask effective questions, um, here's what happens. You begin to eliminate the need to hard close. You should never, ever have to hard close anything. If you're asking good questions, they will close themselves. And what happens is it, it, you know, the buyers don't feel pressured uh, anymore. It places you in a unique position as more of a consultant uh, rather than a salesperson. When you start to ask questions, they begin to view you differently than, um, you know, when they bought a used car. And, uh, you know, they, they, they don't want to be sold. They, they, everybody wants to buy, but nobody wants to be sold. So what we want to do is to learn to ask good questions to lead them in the direction that they want to go. So let's talk about this a little bit more and what kind of questions these are. But what happens is when you begin to ask really intelligent questions, your learning skyrockets. 
you, you, you will understand your buyers and your prospects so much better than you ever did before. And um, you'll close more sales. Uh, you will, your, your questions become your sales toolbox. So what happened with me, you know, when I, when I understood this concept, I started every time I would come up with a new question. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to write that down. And I'll put them down, you know, in a, in a directory someplace, you know, and it was at the time was a notepad. Now it's in the computer. And I recommend that you do this as well, that you have a spreadsheet of questions that you're going to ask. And every question that you ask leads to different uh, results, uh, gets you different information about what the buyer wants to buy or the way that they want to work with you. Um, and so, you know, but what here's what's going to happen, this bottom line here, you will never, ever go back to selling the way that you sold before once you learned how to ask really intelligent questions. So let's talk about this a little bit. Everybody wants to buy, but nobody wants to be sold. Um, you know, that's not my quote. It's something I got from one of the sales books that I'm always reading on a pretty much ongoing basis. I'm studying sales and sales techniques and strategies and negotiation now, but uh, so I can share good ideas with you. But everybody wants to buy. Nobody wants to be sold. And the way that we help them do that is we we lead them. Uh, true professionalism in selling um, lies in the power of your questions, okay? The questions you ask very often will say more about you as a professional than the answers you give. Here's what's going to happen, okay? When you start to really get a hold of this idea that my, my role as a sales professional is to lead them by serving them. I serve them by leading them in the direction that they want to go. The only way you can do that is by continually asking smarter, better, ongoing questions. Okay. And the more that you learn to ask these questions, the more that, that they view you not as somebody that's trying to push them into something that they don't want, but they view you as a guide. You know, think about the last time that you went to, um, to talk to a doctor or an attorney or somebody that you perceive as a high value consultant. And didn't you feel better when, when you walk into a doctor and the doctor says, well, John, well, Joanne, tell me about what's going on with you. And they start probing. They start asking intelligent questions. And, you know, think about the way that they do that. It starts very broadly and then they narrow down. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But they begin to narrow down into specific areas that they need to know about so they can know what to prescribe, right? They need to know what is the right remedy for you, what's going on in your system, what's going on in your body in this case, uh, or your, your situation. If you're talking to an attorney, uh, they want to know what's going on and they're going to you know, start broadly, allow you to talk, 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 and they're going to begin to probe more deeply into specific problem areas. Okay. So this is something that I think that we, we just don't do enough of when it comes to being realtors that we ask a few questions. Well, tell me about what you'd like to buy. You know, well, I want a four bedroom, three bath, two and a half car garage, blah, blah, blah. And we take that down and we, we do the basics, right? And, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that everybody does it wrong. I'm saying that we could do it much better. And when we do be, do it better and we take a hold of this better, you just make a lot more money and the transactions come faster and more people are bragging about you as being their, their fiduciary and their guide. And that's what we want. But the questions you ask very often will say more about you as a professional than the answers that you give. Now, by the way, when it comes to new construction, this is absolutely true with new construction buyers, but it's also absolutely true when it comes to meeting with a builder or a builder's rep, the salesperson that, that is selling for the builder, or with a, a land developer, big or small. It's about the types of questions that you ask. And um, so I don't know, maybe I beat this idea to death, but let me let me click on, on through here and then we're going to talk about some specific ways to get started thinking about your questions. So your effectiveness in selling is directly related to the quality of the questions that you ask. Okay. It, it, I would take a picture of this or write it down. I, and I want you to own this idea. 
okay? Because it's not a one and done thing where you're going to go, okay, I got 10 questions here and these 10 questions are going to, are going to skyrocket me to success as a new construction, as the go-to uh, expert in new construction. Probably not going to be quite that way. You know, you're going to have 10 questions and then you're going to add to it and you're going to add to it. And the, the deeper you go into your career and your niche with new construction, I got to a place where um, I would come up with a new question every once in a while, you know, and you're, you're going along and you go, wow, you know, I can't believe that I never asked this question before. And when you, it, you, you get to a place where you start to write these things down you're, and, you, and you come to a realization that this question is going to make me money. Uh, and that's what happened with me that, and, and to this day, uh, you know, there are times when I come up with a new question, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've never asked anybody this before. I can't believe that I've never probed this particular aspect of the sales process with a buyer or with a seller. And you get to the point where when you write these things down, you realize, and it goes into your, your arsenal, if you will, your quiver. You know, it goes into your toolbox because this is going to be something that's going to help you to sell better and more and easier. And that's what we want. So let me keep going here. Effectiveness of your question uh, of your selling is directly related to the quality of questions he asks. And true professional selling is consultative in nature. It's leading your prospect to the conclusion that they want to achieve, not what I want to achieve. It has very little or nothing at all to do with my desire to get a commission, right? Or your desire to get a commission. It really doesn't. That's not what they're concerned about. What they're concerned about is, can they get what they want? You know, and our job is to lead them, is to serve them through leading them towards their logical conclusion, um, you know, that they want to go to. True professionalism and selling is about servant leadership, servant leadership. And, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, the way that we learn selling a lot of times is close, 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 hard, close, close, you know, overcome objections. Um, I'm telling you, I think those days are dead and gone. They really are. I'm not saying that we don't overcome objections. I'm saying that it's not about hard closing. I think when you learn to ask questions, you don't hard close at all anymore. There is no hard close. Because when you learn to ask the right questions at the right time in the right way, and you learn to take this consultative approach, um, it, it slows down the process, but it also speeds, speeds it up very much. And there are no hard closes. Uh, or, or really, I, I, I don't think they exist anymore. I think that when you learn how to ask the right questions, you're leading them through a natural progression and you're soft closing. You are getting agreement. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll show you how to do that uh, as we move through, forward here. And, and I think we'll probably go deeper on this next week if, if anybody's interested. But, but you know, you're getting agreement that you're on the right track, that you're hearing the right thing from them and that you're understanding clearly what it is that they want to buy. But hard closes and, you know, overcoming objections and, and you know, it, it just kind of goes away. OK. And there's no more feeling of, uh, you know, that kind of felt salesy or sleazy to me. Nobody wants to do that. Not on the buyer's side, not on your side, right? So, so we're serving our clients by leading them, by removing the roadblocks for them, by providing guidance for them to get to what they want to achieve. In this case, their new construction home, their dream home. And as we've talked about uh, a, a lot, and I'll probably talk about again sometime, there are many, many, many buyers out there who want to have a new home as opposed to used home. And they go the other direction because they've never found a realtor that really either knows the space or wants to know the space or wants to lead them to it. So there's a, it's a huge, huge uh, missed opportunity. OK, let me get through here. So so uh, we're serving clients by leading them removing towards their goals, their stated goals, their desires. Right. So this is more than what we're talking about is more than. So tell me about the house that you want to build. So tell me about your dream home. Now, those are good questions to start with, but there's more than that. OK, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Understanding this. Uh, OK, uh, understanding new constr uh, understanding how to ask questions. It eliminates the fear of being salesy or pushy. 
There is no more, wow, I don't want to do that. I don't know. You know, that just feels kind of pushy. I don't want to be a pushy salesperson. That goes away entirely because when you ask questions, you you really become more of a consultant. It, it, it eliminates the fear of sales in general. How many times have I had realtors that say, well, I don't want to do that. It just seems, I don't want to be salesy. Guess what? You don't have to be. You can be a leader. You can be a servant leader. So uh, here's a, a good thing that I would take a snapshot of. And then we're going to quickly get into some of the questions that we can ask here and how to begin asking intelligent questions. Um, but uh, this is a good thing. If I say it, if I say it about something, it's kind of in doubt. You know, if they say it, it's truth. It's gospel truth. You know, think about that. Oh, John, this is the house for you. I'm sure this is the house for you. You know, and they're probably going, hmm. I'm not so sure, but if you ask a question around it or questions, you know, and everything that you want to say, how can you begin to rewrite those things, those salesy things into more of a question? Well, John, what are your thoughts about this, about this house? And then why, you know, uh, so let's, let's get into that a little bit more. Um, so if they say it, it's gospel. So whoever's asking the questions, by the way, is the person that is controlling or leading the conversation. You know, we think a lot of times that in order to sell, I have to lead. And in order to lead, I have to sell, 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 talk, talk, talk. But in the case of selling and when you're doing consultative selling, you're, the person who's asking the questions is the one who's really leading the, the process. Okay. When they're asking questions, they're leading. When you're asking questions, you are leading the process. Okay. General rule of thumbs about uh, interviewing prospects. And this is what I teach realtors all the time. Learn how to interview better. Okay. And the better you interview them about what they want to do, what would keep them from doing it, what would cause them to do it, what would cause them to say yes to this, this proposition, this, uh, this house, this idea, idea of working with you or listing with you. Um, the better you come up with questions, the easier it is to, to move to the close. Okay. Let me see if I can adjust a little bit here so I can see uh, the screens better. So general rule, rule of thumbs, you're, you're going to start broadly with your questions and you're going to narrow down. And I want to give you a couple of examples here. And again, this is not meant to be comprehensive this morning. Uh, it's meant to just stimulate your thinking about it, okay, and begin to um, to create a conversation with you about the questions you're, you're asking. But here's some examples. You know, maybe when I start to meet with a, a, a buyer or with a builder, you know, a general broad question, well, you know, if I'm meeting with a builder, well, tell me about your business. Well, tell me about your community. If I meet with a buyer, you know, tell me about the house that you want to, that you're, you're, you're wanting to build or tell me about your dream home. And so you start with broad questions and you don't, you know, quickly jump down to narrow, narrow closing questions or, or, or pre-closing questions. Um, but you, you want to spend some time just learning about their situation. And I know you guys are such good communicators. So many realtors are great uh, communicators. So I know this stuff comes naturally for you. But I want you to spend more time thinking about it and, and really create a portfolio, if you will, of the types of questions that you're you're asking. Um, hang on one second here. Uh, OK, so then you're going to you're going to focus and you're going to narrow around. So after you've begun to ask broad questions, you're going to focus. And you're going to start narrowing down around their goals and their pains their challenges, their struggles, their fears, their concerns. All that's kind of in one. Now, something I want you to remember here um, and, and be aware of is that all, all human motivation, I think I'm saying this right, everything that we do um, in life is led by one of two motivations, only two main things. One, we are running towards our goal. 
we're running towards the pleasure, okay? The thing that, that is desirable to us. I want this home. I want this success. I want this clothes. I want this deal. I want this relationship, whatever it is, you know, and, and, or the only other motivation is only two. We're running towards pleasure or we're running away from what is it? Pain. That's the other one. We're running toward the thing we want. We're running away from the thing. Ah, uh, I don't want to sleep on that park bench anymore. <laughs> I don't want to end up in my car. I don't want to lose my house. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose this client, you know, um, or, or whatever. We, you know, we're running away from pain. We're running towards success. And every one of us is like that. You are. I am. We all are. And when we begin to get this, okay, when you begin to think around this and think about this, buyers are the same way. And, and any seller that you're approaching, any prospect that you're working with, there's two motivations. They're running towards the thing that they want or they're running away from the thing that, that scares them. Okay. Good morning, Facebook user. Um, and tell me who you are. Oh, you know, if, you, if you're not connected up, at least, uh, you know, type your name in so I don't have to call you Facebook user. Thank you for being here. I'm, I'm excited to uh, spend a few minutes with you here. Um, but all of us, uh, you know, it's human nature. We run towards the thing that we want, pleasure. We run away from the thing that we don't want, which is pain or risk or the thing we're fearful of. Now, I want you to think about this in terms of yourself, okay? If I said uh, to you, um, hey, guys, you know, you need to go um, you need to go uh, knock on 100 doors today. I'm not going to tell you to do that, by the way. Um, it's not a terrible thing. I don't think it's a terrible thing, but may not be the best thing, okay, that you can do. And, uh, but, or, or I want you to pick up the phone and I want you to call 100 buyers today or 10 buyers. I want you to call 10 builders. Um, what happens inside of you when you hear that? Hey, I want you to pick up the phone and call uh, 20 buyers today. Liz Larson, how in the world are you? What's the temperature up in Chicago today, Liz? Um, we need to catch up soon. So, guys, Liz Larson is uh, one of the really outstanding uh, sales managers uh, for um, for William Ryan Homes up in the Chicagoland area and uh, really a, a thought leader in uh, sales and uh, new home sales leadership. Um so um, thank you for being here, Liz. So, you know, but if I told you today, hey, you need to pick up the phone, you need to call Liz and you need to call 20 other builders up or 10 other builders. A lot of people would, a lot of realtors would be fearful of that um, because <laughs> it's cold here too. And so I think we got a few more months of it, Liz. Uh, but uh, a lot of people would be fearful of, and a lot of times we're fearful of something that we don't know, or we're fearful of the thing that I was talking about earlier. Well, I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be pushy. I don't know the questions to ask. I don't know how to conduct that conversation. And so what do we do? We avoid it. We run away from it. All human nature is this way. If it's something we're fearful of, if it's something we're concerned about, it's a struggle, it's a challenge, it's a pain, we turn around and run in the other direction. Guess what? New construction buyers are made up the exact same way. They're going to be motivated by, and so many people, we've talked about this before, NAR has done a lot of research around this. I think Hoodle's doing more research around it now. And, you know, working with the realtors and the builder reps, we're going to be able to do even more. But but a full 59%, when they, when they interview uh, buyers, um, every year NAR does this big, massive survey and they talk to 7,000 buyers, not new construction buyers, but home buyers. And they ask them a bunch of questions. And one of the questions they ask them is, would you prefer to have new construction overused? 59% of people surveyed year in, year out say, yes, I would prefer to have new overused. I would rather have a new home than a used home, huh? Now hang with me here. That's six out of 10. Six out of 10 buyers 
would rather have a new home than a used home. But that's not how many are buying a new home. Why is that? Why do you think that is? You know, because in a given year, only around uh, 7 to 12 percent actually, so one out of 10 actually buys a new home. But six out of 10 say that they want to. Why is that? Go back to what we're talking about. That we run towards the thing that we're excited by, the thing that are, is our goal. We run towards pleasure. We run away from pain and fear and struggles. Now, if you're if you're with me on this, uh, um, you know, I would be taking a picture of this and I would, after we get off, think about it uh, a lot because what happens is most people, so out of those two motivations, okay, hey, hey thank you. Uh, keep commenting, guys. This is great. Uh, you know, out of those two motivations, the one that's the most powerful, which one? What do you think? Mr. Fresquez, it's good to see you out in Southern California. Uh, agent doesn't know and doesn't want to show. Agent doesn't know and or, or, and or doesn't want to show new construction. Right. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. By the way, guys, uh, if you get a chance to connect with uh, Mr. Fresquez, uh, David is, a, is also an outstanding realtor in new construction who started on the builder side and uh, is, has some great, great insights that he shared with me uh, in our past conversation. So David is absolutely somebody you should connect with. Uh, they don't know how. Buyers don't know how. That's absolutely true. And what they don't know how to do, if it looks uh, confusing, um, if it looks difficult, um, it becomes, and I, I don't know if this is Liz or who this is saying this, but yeah, it's fear. And, and, and they're fearful about it. And so they run away. Now, the two, out of those two motivations, we talked about people are drawn towards, we all are, we're drawn towards the thing that we want, or we run away from the thing that we don't want. The thing that we're fearful about or it seems like pain could be uncomfortable. I don't know how to do this. Um, it's a struggle. Out of those two motivations, the one that is the most powerful in human nature is the second one. We run away from risk. Hang with me on this. Okay. We run away from risk. We run towards pleasure. We run away from pain. Okay. Okay. And that one is more powerful than running two. So if I've got two motivations going on inside of me, wow, I really want to have that dream home. Oh, I really want to have that. You know, we've talked about it. The missus and I, we've got our dream home. We've been talking about it for years. And so I've got this desire. But the bigger motivation that looms over us is the fear, the fear factor. I don't know how to do it. I can't find a realtor who really seems like they you know, they've done it enough times that they can remove the risk. It seems big. It seems risky. It seems scary. Biggest purchase. And by the way, building a new home is arguably the most complex purchase that anybody will ever make in their life. Most people are not going to do something as complex as a consumer as build a new home. It's got a lot more questions. It's got a lot more variables than here. Let's just go to the MLS. You know, I can click up four bedroom, three bath, two and a half car garage, $350,000 and five mile radius of, you know, some point on the map. Here's your options. New construction. It's a different process. What's this mean? It means that if you want to sell more new construction homes, you got to what? You got to remove the fear. Okay. You have to remove the fear. You have to let them know that I am your guide. I am your fiduciary. No, that doesn't mean I know everything uh, about it. I, I, I can't even string up. Uh, you wouldn't want me to wire your house. Okay. But, you know, this is where I specialize. This is what I'm learning. And the more you take that approach and start to ask better, better questions, the more the fear goes away and the more that they will align with you and allow you to take them through that process and love you for it. And tell everybody else, hey, this is why you need to go work with Liz. Hey, this is why you need to go work with David. Um, so becoming fascinated. So general rule of thumb, become fascinated with your prospects, dreams, their goals, their dreams, and their struggles. 
So when you're in this questioning process, you're always looking at two things. Where do you want to go? Why do you want to go there? And you're trying to define that. And the other thing that you're trying to define is what would keep you from going there? Good morning, Facebook user. Tell me who you are so I don't have to call you Facebook user. It's just rude. Facebook user. I don't want to call you Facebook user. Say, you know, tell me who it is. I, I, don't, I don't know why this didn't show up better. I wish it did with uh, StreamYard. But, but Facebook user, I'm super glad you're here. So tell me who you are. Um, but, you know, I want you to become fascinated with the prospects that you're going after. <laughs> hey, Heike, good morning. <laughs> glad you're here. I want you to become fascinated with their dream. Now, by the way, the same thing applies if you're calling on a builder, if you're calling on a builder's rep, which we've got a number of builder's reps that are joining our group here and sales and sales managers. You know, if you want to serve them, you better learn them, right? You better uh, get down and, and develop a, uh, a toolbox of intelligent questions to ask beyond, well, what does it take me to get a listing? Okay, that's not going to cut it anymore. You know, we need to really figure out how can I become a fiduciary to the builders and the developers and the builders reps and the builder sales manager and the marketing director. You know, what is their pain? What is their struggle? And so this is all about becoming um, really a, a, a different kind of realtor, you know, when it comes to new construction, but become fascinated with their goals, with their dreams and with their struggles. And I, I promise you, uh, it's going to change everything because you're going to become more of a fiduciary to them and a guide. OK, you're coming alongside of them in their pain. You're meeting them where they are in their journey and um, and you're helping them to achieve their stated goal. Not mine. My goal is, yeah, I just want to get that listing. So I've got something. Let that go. Just let it go. You know, if you're calling on builders, let it go. OK, focus on them. Become fascinated with their goals where they're trying to take their business, um, you know, with their problems and, and the, the things that they're that they're wrestling with. So let's talk a little bit about uh, types of questions and then we're going to wrap it up for today. Um, you know, here's some questions. And again, this is not uh, comprehensive. This is not uh, every kind of question, but they're a good starting place. And by the way, I want to share with you um, a couple of resources here, too, today. OK, uh, you know, I'm, I'm big on on uh, diving deep and learning about sales and sales strategy. And here's one of them that I really like. And by the way, it's called Spin Selling. Um, this is a book by uh, a guy by the name of Neil Rackham. I've never spoken to Neil. I'd really like to. If anybody knows Neil, um, tell him I'd like to interview him. Um, but Spin Selling is arguably one of the most powerful books when it comes to asking intelligent questions in your sales process, spend selling, highly, highly recommend it. And by the way, it's also not something that you're going to read it and go, oh, well, that was easy read, <laughs> you know, not me anyway, you know, and, and I don't think it'll be that way because you're going to dive into it and you're going to go, huh, there's a lot more to this than what I've probably been thinking about. And even if you got your GRI and your ABR and all the other things, all the other certifications, there's more to think about it. And when you do, I'm telling you what's happening, okay? You, when you learn to ask intelligent questions and you learn to lead your sales process through asking intelligent, rightly timed questions, you move from playing checkers to playing chess or maybe 3D chess, okay? You are moving your sales process because you're thinking about things at a different level than I'm telling you 99.99% of realtors are not doing. So as a realtor, if you want to get really good in new construction and you want to get really, really good and you want to become the go-to realtor for new homes, learn to ask questions. So what are some of the types of questions we can ask? And then we're going to wrap. First of all, we have already said this one, open-ended questions, information gathering. When you're starting uh, your, your interview process with any prospect, buyer or builder, or developer, it begins by asking open-ended information gathering questions. A lot of times, uh, you know, and they talk about in spin selling that traditionally 
uh, you know, I'm not trying to push this book, but it's a good one. Okay. And I may uh, do actually do a series on this. If anybody's interested, I wouldn't mind doing like a mastermind group with a, a group of uh, um, realtors and builder sales reps around uh, specifically the topic of spend selling and how to apply it to your sales. It's going to require reading a book, um, which I highly recommend. But um, and one of the things he talks about early in the book is there are two, there are two types of questions. There's open questions and there's closed questions. You know, a closed question is a yes, no question. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, a great idea. Is that uh, Heike? Um, so, well, if you know it, if, if you guys are interested and we've got, you know, six or eight or 10 people, uh, I would, I'd, I'd be happy to put that together and we can talk about doing a, a mastermind group on zoom where we're specifically going through this because the, here's the interesting thing about everything that, that, that I'm teaching about and everything that we're learning together is when you begin to apply these strategies, you will start to move ahead so much faster than you can possibly imagine. It may not happen today, but it's going to happen fast. Okay. That because you're, you're, you, what's happening is nobody else is reading the books. Nobody else is diving deep. And when you begin to dive deep, you start to leave everybody else in your wake. I'm not kidding you. Much faster than you can possibly imagine. Liz says, what about your current home? Do you, what about your current home do you love? What about your current? Oh, that's outstanding. Guys, you, you take a picture of this. Write it down. So Liz, who's a sales manager with William Ryan Homes, uh, is giving you some great questions to ask a buyer. What is it about your current place that you love? What is what about your current home? Do you not love? What would you like to leave behind? You're always measuring two things. What do they want to go towards? What do they want to run away from? What are they moving towards? What are they moving away from? And that's what Liz's questions are doing here. You know, she's asking them questions about what they're moving towards, what they're moving away from. Here's some types of questions, though. We're gonna, you know, so for, first of all, you're gonna ask a lot of open-ended questions. By the way, if you haven't heard me say this earlier, start a spreadsheet. If you haven't started a spreadsheet by now, start one today, okay? Get into Google Docs or Google Sheets or get into Excel and start a spreadsheet around the types of questions that you are already asking or that you should ask. And I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, and, and maybe we'll do this in a separate post but uh, as well, but what is one of the most intelligent questions that you have ever asked or that you heard another salesperson ask around new construction? What is, and, and Liz just gave us a great example here of two of them. Okay, tell me, what do, you, what do you love about your current home? What do you not love about it? And um, I'll, I'll, let's, let's kind of grow with that, but... Um, What's an intelligent question that you have learned to ask in your new construction sales process or that you've heard somebody else ask? Let's share some ideas here. So here's some types of questions. First of all, open-ended information gathering, and then there's yes, no questions. And there's different types of different ways that you're going to use these information gathering questions you're always going to use, always. But especially when you're starting the process with somebody, you're asking a lot of information gathering questions. You know, yes, no questions you're going to use more when you're starting to tie it down to a um, to specific things that they're going to choose. You know, are they going to move forward? Are they not going to move forward? You're going to ask yes, no questions around here. Here, Liz, got another one for you guys. Write this one down. What is your situation like right now? I love that question. So tell me about your situation and then shut up. Next person who speaks loses. Okay. Tell me about your situation right now. And let's talk about a few. Here's a good one. Why? So when they tell you, so let's say, you know, you're Liz or you're, you're like Liz and you're, you're asking intelligent questions to your buyers and maybe you start with a question. Well, tell me about your situation right now. And you always want to keep it conversational and natural. And they say, well, you know, we've been in this house for 20 years and blah, blah, blah. And it's we just kind of grown it and the kids moved away, blah, blah, whatever they tell you. Okay. A good thing to follow that up with is 
you know, and they, they say, well, we, we're really thinking about building a new house. You know, we just like to, we'd like to have newer appliances. And we see all this fancy schmancy stuff that they got over at William Ryan homes. And, and we want to move to Chicago and, and, uh, and, you know, a, a, good, a good thing to follow up is, is, is that's interesting. Can you tell me why that is? Whatever they say. And there are negotiators and there are sales trainers that say you can actually ask why about five levels deep. I never do it that way, but you can. Uh, you can begin to ask the why. And when you understand the why, you're, you're, you begin to speak to them at a different level. Okay, you begin to understand the emotion behind why they want to. It's not just I want a new home uh, or I want to live in this neighborhood or we want to move out to Naperville, you know, or whatever it is. But, well, that's interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Why is that? Or, you know, we've always wanted a new home, but we haven't pulled the trigger on it. Well, that's interesting. Tell me about that. Why is that? What, what has kept you from doing it? So you get into the why. Liz says, if you're going to make a move, what time, what type of home would be ideal? Okay, so this kind of gets into uh, the ne next uh, type of questions here, um, and and I'll and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Oh man, you guys are coming up with some good ones now. I like that idea. Of not why why did, why too many levels? Yeah, why too many levels? Personal or business? Yeah, and and we really you know what what happens is. So many times as salespeople, and I'm going to kind of move off of the idea of realtor because we got a lot of builder sales reps that are joining us in the group these days. And, and I'm so thankful for you guys. So thankful for the value and the wisdom that you bring to it. And, uh, you know, um, and, and glad you're here. But um, what happens so many times is somebody says, um, well, you know, you're, you're interviewing your buyer and they say, well, we're we're thinking about uh, maybe building new. And, you know, we're so quick to, as salespeople, well, that's awesome. Let's just get you right into it. And we haven't really explored the depth of that, that statement, okay? We don't know the why behind it, okay? And so one of the things we have to learn to do is begin to ask more questions around that. Well, that's interesting. And I'm glad that you like new construction. I do too. Tell me though, why is that? What's really leading you to the, even if it's something that's in your favor, okay? Where you're going, well, why would I ask a question? I just want to get this thing done. So I get to the next transaction, next buyer, because you want to understand what, what it means behind that, okay? Um, so we want to ask why questions. By the way, we're not going to do this today. Maybe next week we'll do... Um, I, I want to talk to you guys about um, doing what I call a, a fab presentation features, uh, features, accomplishments and benefits is the way I've learned it. And, and I think there's actually a better way to do it. But, you know, I learned this years ago and it's such a powerful, powerful selling tool is to begin to understand these whys. And uh, I, I read a book recently. Uh, by one of the, in fact, we've interviewed him in here, uh, Jim Edwards, who wrote a really, really powerful book about writing good sales copy. And he uses the example of buying a drill bit. Somebody goes to Lowe's and they're looking for, um, you know, I don't know, you know, they're, they're looking for a certain size drill bit, right? And as a salesperson, you know, we always want to know, well, why do they want the bit? Well, I want the bit so I can drill a hole. Okay, well, so what are they looking for? Do they want to, are they really wanting to buy the drill bit or are they wanting to buy the hole? They want to create the hole, you know, and you can begin to ask questions of a buyer's behavior to understand it's not just about the bit. It's not even about the hole. It's about the birdhouse that I want to build. In fact, it may be about the experience that I want to have with my son or daughter in building that birdhouse. So we want to ask these why questions to really uh, go deeper. What are a few others? Here's one, tie down questions. I don't use these a whole lot. You can definitely overuse them, but they are very, very powerful and we need to learn them. Here's a, this is another book and I, I can't find my copy of it, but um, one of the really fundamental books about selling is by a guy by the name of Tom Hopkins. He wrote a book called 
How to Master the Art of Selling Anything. He also wrote, and, and by the way, Tom Hopkins was a realtor. So he wrote another one about uh, how to master the art of selling real estate. Now, I, I, I'll just give you the straight skinny on this, okay? Uh, first time I read Tom's books, it's like, oh my gosh, that's not me. That is not my style. I am, you know, it seemed a little, little smarmy to me. But you need to learn these tools. You need to understand uh, the tools. And so two, two uh, books, you know, one has been selling. The other one is Tom Hopkins. And Tom talks a lot about tie-down questions. Well, what are tie-down questions? And I'm not going to go into depth about it, you know, if you can do a Google search on it. But it's like, um, well, that would make a lot of sense to do. Uh, it sounds like that would make a lot of sense for you, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, wouldn't it? That could be a that could be a, an excellent uh, thing for you to add to your new construction home, couldn't it? And so it's wouldn't it, couldn't it, shouldn't it, uh, aren't. And those are ways that you can build a soft close into a question that you're asking. You're asking a question, but you're asking the question in such a way that you're getting agreement. And they can go, well, yeah, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. So it might make sense for us to go take a look at that house, wouldn't it? So it might make sense for us to have that conversation with that mortgage loan officer, wouldn't it? And it's not just wouldn't it, it's wouldn't it, couldn't it, shouldn't it, aren't, don't. And there's many, many different ways to use those. But that is a powerful question to ask. And it's one that you absolutely want to build into your um, into your toolbox of questioning technique. But there's a few more. So we got open-ended yes, no, why questions. Why questions can go five levels deep. Uh, tie down questions, alternate choice questions. You guys know the alternate choice, right? Well, would two o'clock today or three o'clock tomorrow be better for you? And, um, you know, and those work. In a lot of cases, those work. So what would work better for you, Mr. or Mrs. Seller? Would it be better if we get together today or at, at two o'clock on Monday? And a lot of times when you learn to ask alternate choice questions, they're going to give you a uh, one or another, yeah, tomorrow at three o'clock would be better than today. What's the with the value of that? Either way, you are you are advancing the sale. Either way, whether it's today at three o'clock or tomorrow at four o'clock, you're moving forward in the process with them. Okay. So alternate choice questions. The problem with alternate choice questions is they're they're overused. Okay. And people feel can feel like they're being sold. So uh, measurement questions, and then we're going to kind of wrap up on this. Uh, measurement questions are where um, it, it kind of goes back to what Liz was saying. You know, uh, measurement questions are uh, when I'm asking a question and I ask them to share with me. So, you know, maybe you're walking through the house, you know, and you're walking through the house. Where would you place this one on a scale of one to five, John? Five being, oh, my gosh, or, or one to ten, John. You know, uh, five being this is exactly what, you know, take me back and and let's sign the documents right now. I got to get going. I want this house. And one being, I don't care if this is the last new construction house that I ever see in my life. It ain't happening. OK. And, you know, you can develop your own your own way of talking through that and your own script, obviously. But when you do, I mean, you, you actually make it kind of fun. And they say, and, they, and so I, I you know, I, I think measurement questions are very, very powerful. And they say, well, you know, I think it's maybe a four out of a scale of five. Now, what I like to do is begin to ask some why questions around that. Okay. They say, well, it's, it's a four out of five. Well, that's interesting. What makes it a four? What, what is it that you really like about this house the most that would really make it a four for you? Here's another one to ask around. What keeps it from being a five? You know, what, what keeps it from being a perfect house for you? What don't you like about it? So you're always asking measurement questions. When you learn to ask these questions um, better and better, more and more, again, you're just leading them through the process uh, and, and the natural conclusion that they're going to buy and they're going to buy from you. And they don't feel sold. They feel led. Okay. But you ultimately want to ask commitment questions or what I call soft closing questions. So as they uh, begin to tell you what it is they want, you do want to start asking some soft closing questions. I'll give you some examples of those. So here, so, so first of all, uh, on your questions, hang on one second here. 
Okay. Got to wrap up here, guys, real quick. Um, but some, you know, whenever you're asking questions, you don't want it to be, um, hang on a second. You don't want it to be like an interrogation. Okay. You don't want them to feel uh, like, um, oh my gosh, you know, you just keep like pounding me with the questions. Why? 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 Well, what about this? You know, you want it to, you want it to be um, very um, inquisitive. You want to use softening statements when you're asking questions. So examples of softening statements. Um, you know, Joanne, you said this and this and this. Let me ask you, why is that important to you? So that's a softening statement. Here's another one. Um, you know, John, you talked about blah, blah, blah. I'm curious about, though, this thing over here. And so you're leading into the question by asking softening statements where it doesn't feel like they're being interrogated. It feels like, which is true. I mean, you know, you're just being inquisitive and fascinating. That's really interesting. They make a, they make a statement and you say, that's interesting. Tell me more, more about this thing over here. And so you can start to see how um, you can you can really begin to create a, a powerful uh, portfolio of questions that you're going to ask. Um, it sounds like uh, you really want new construction. It sounds like you really would rather live in this neighborhood than that neighborhood. Am I understanding that correctly? And so that's more of a tie down question when you're you're getting clarification around what it is that you've heard. It sounds like you you'd really rather wait until March instead of doing it. Uh, in November is, am I hearing that correctly? And let them tell you and write it down. You know, you're always testing, testing, testing what it is they're saying to make sure that you're understanding correctly. Okay. So last couple of things here, soft closing uh, statements. As they're, as you're getting uh, agreement on things, you want to start closing it. And so the more you move into your sales process with people, you're going to start using soft close statements. Like, you know, does that sound fair? So it sounds like, John, that you're really looking to do this and this and this. Um, and, and you want to sell your house first or you want to list your house before we do that. Um, does that sound fair? And so I'm asking questions around uh, getting and I'm getting commitments on things. Does that make sense to you? So if I make a statement, you know, and uh, and I start to close that they're moving forward with me. I don't want to move forward in a sale if they're not moving forward with me. This is their sale. It's not mine. Okay. It's their process. So as you're beginning to understand better what they was they want to buy, what's going to help them to move forward, you want to begin to tie down uh, commitments on those things. And here's a couple of others. Um, can we agree on that? And, and so this, these are good ones to use. What are your thoughts about this? And so if you make a statement and you want to make sure that they are in agreement with it, what are your thoughts about it? OK, here's some great learning resources and then I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I already mentioned these to you, but I would go if I were you and, and grab these. Here's a third one. Uh, Chris Voss never split the difference. Chris is an FBI, FBI uh, negotiator for years. And uh, I'd love to interview him one of these days. Maybe we'll get him in here and see if he'll. But he wrote a, a, just an amazing book called Never Split the Difference. I recommend that you guys go get each of these. And uh, if anybody's interested in, in doing um, a mastermind around, you know, one or more of these, um, I'm open to it. So um, three lists of, and, and this is where I'm going to wrap up with you, three lists that you need to develop in your sales. You know, your list of questions around every conceivable topic, you need to have a database or spreadsheet of types of questions about everything you can think of, okay, related to the buyer, the builder, the developer, the sales process. So you also need to have a uh, another list or that same list of their questions. You need to list out their questions. And I'll tell you two things about this. One, you know, when you start to get down to it, people are really only going to ask you about eight or 10 or 12 questions, okay? There, you know, most of their questions really come down to very common things that they typically ask. And um, uh, I know you guys know this stuff. And also make another list about their objections. I'll save that for another day. But questions, objections uh, have a very powerful relationship. You know, questions, so I, I won't get into that, but uh, a question can be an objection in disguise. An objection can and should be turned into a question. We'll save that for another day. 
questions and objections and and uh, maybe we'll do a session on that sometime so um i'm gonna sk skip through all that um and I'll, I'll wrap up on this okay um there's a a quote that i heard um a few years ago that i think is so critical to where we are right now and it's kind of the foundation of everything that i think that, that we need to do okay and it's this, the only sustainable competitive advantage moving forward is learning and implementing faster than your competition. The only sustainable competitive advantage, that's hard to say, competitive advantage uh, from here and moving forward is learning and implementing faster than your competition. If you want to move faster than the other realtors in your market, learn more and implement, test, test, test. Learn one small thing from anything I've said today and don't just write it down, go use it. If you don't know how to use it, or if you're intimidated by using it, if you're not sure what to implement next, reach out to me, I'm here for you. Just send me a DM, we'll talk about it and we'll get you because I don't want anybody being stuck. But the only sustainable competitive advantage for any of us moving forward is learning and implementing faster than the competition. So guys, that's all I've got for today. I thank you so much for uh, for being with me here. And uh, let me turn this off. Um, you know, if you if you added uh, a comment, um, bless you. I appreciate it. I don't like talking to myself, and so I know a lot of times people are intimidated. Well, I don't. You know, there's no bad questions. There's no bad comments. Uh, there's you know, there's only learning. We're all learning. And uh, so thank you so much for being here today. I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing rest of the week. And more than anything, I hope you make it amazing for somebody else as well. So uh, thank you for being with me. And uh, Affiliate Realtors, tomorrow we're going to be talking about, uh, in the Affiliate Realtor group on Zoom, uh, we're going to be talking about um, your sales process. We're going to get into, you know, what is your sales cycle? What's your pipeline look like? And, and what are the stages of that pipeline? And how do we move people through that pipeline. If we don't understand our sales process, if we don't understand the sales cycle of buyers and sellers, then we're probably not doing it as well as we could. But um, love you guys to pieces. Thank you for being here. Uh, please share this with somebody else. Invite somebody else to join us the next time. I'll be back on uh, next Wednesday. If you got any problems, reach out and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.